Today, I want to talk to you about the five main problems, issues that I see in beginner and intermediate students. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Martino. I am the founder of the London Saxophone School. Guys, we're here to help you master your skills on the saxophone. So whether you need lessons, masterclasses, workshops and whatnot, we're here to help. So if you want to work more closely with me and my team, you can book your lesson, whether it's in person or on Zoom here below in the description. There's a link where you can do that. And we also have an online program coming out. So we have you covered. OK. So the first thing to avoid is having a very tight embouchure. Now, guys, don't worry, because this is a really common thing that happens with beginners and some intermediate players as well. OK, but you need to be aware of what is going on. So when you're playing, when you have this thing in your mouth and you're playing the saxophone right like this, OK, you need to find the proper amount of uh, tension and relaxation. You need to find that nice balance, OK, because if your embouchure is too tight, then you'll be killing vibrations over here and there won't be enough air going through. But if your embouchure is too loose like this, um, then the pitch won't be the correct one and the sound won't be good either. OK. So what you want to do is you want to reteach your body, you want to reteach your facial muscles to stay chill <laughs> to relax okay so you can start you can start your sound from a nice and relaxed state so there's something that i call simply the ocean sound now the ocean sound is basically an exhale sound like this george carzone the master george carzone calls it the ha sound like this because if you do this from the very beginning you're going to be relaxing your shoulders and your throat and your muscles and your facial muscles and everything and that will allow you to start fresh let's say okay so you can do that without the saxophone and then with and then you can start the sound at least like this the the embouchure will start from a nice and relaxed state So I've made a video on how the ocean sound works and how you should practice it. I'm going to pop it up in here so you can take a look. One thing that you might like, I'm doing a free saxophone webinar next Thursday, June the 2nd, in which we'll talk about simple and stress-free techniques and methods to help you improve your sound and also to get more down in the practice room without wasting any precious time. Two very important topics. So if you want to register for that, it's completely free. The link is here below in the description and I will hope to see you on Thursday. So the second thing to do is avoiding tonguing too much. Now, I want to ask you something. Guys, do you think that the saxophone is a wind instrument or a tongue instrument? Silly, stupid question, but actually makes a lot of sense. The saxophone needs air to work, right? Needs wind. That's why we call it a wind instrument. We don't really call it a tongue instrument. So you want to picture the air as the king, as the most important thing. Then the tonguing technique comes later. It's a secondary thing. So if you're struggling with tonguing or if you're finding that your whenever you tongue your sound just it gets all messed up it's probably because well firstly the tongue is doing too much and also the air that is coming out is not properly in place so the first thing that i would do is i would forget about tonguing funny enough okay so i would completely forget about tonguing okay if you're struggling with tonguing and i would concentrate on just slurring everything okay so you want to play slow melodies nothing too technically challenging keep it simple so you have the time to really think about the air and the beauty of the line of the melody okay if it gets too complicated if fingerings are awkward or if the rhythm is hard to understand and figure out it'll be too much you just want to spend the time on slurring okay of course if you have repeated notes like b b b c c c of course you need to tongue so i would choose something that is preferably all slurred with no repeated notes if you can okay so that'll be really really good because then when you when you go back to tonguing everything will be a bit more in place and more solid <laughs> Now, when you 
do tongue and start to actually build up your foundations on the tongue technique, you want to be sure that the notes that you're tonguing are actually very, very close together, let's say, okay? So you're trying to avoid any kind of gap in between the two notes. So you make them as linked, as connected as possible, okay? And that will really allow you to focus and to really nail and to really be aware of what the tongue is doing. So you're actually refining the tonguing technique and then later on it would be easier to do, you know, shorter tonguing and stuff like that. The third thing to avoid is flying fingers. And I think this is something that affects everyone who is learning the saxophone. So you want to avoid, essentially, you want to avoid coming down with your fingers really, really strongly like that, okay? Because what, what happens is that it will take a long time for the finger to come down from here all the way into here, right? From there, boom, it takes a long time. So if you wanna play fast, that will really, not help at all okay so um a friend of mine who plays the flute professionally some time ago he told me the fingers have to shadow the keys if you notice you know if you notice any professional player any master you know um will keep the fingers really really low of course the fingers will come up a little bit because they have to okay but the idea is that they don't come up all the way here okay because that will Firstly, affect the sound, funny enough, but it will affect the sound because you're going to be creating weird accents that maybe you don't want. And also, it will affect the speed in which you want to play. If you want to play really fast, doing that won't really be helpful <laughs> at all, okay? So remember, shadow the keys. Like that. And this also affects the thumb. So you can also have a flying thumb, let's say, okay? So a very common thing that I see with people is that their, their thumb goes up and down like this, okay? So the proper motion, sh motion should be more something like that, okay? So you find your sweet spot in here, then don't move the thumb whatsoever, okay? You just wanna do that. Don't do that because that you're gonna have troubles in uh, changing registers and making things smooth, make sense? <laughs> Now, the fourth thing to avoid, I would say, is learning only with YouTube. Now, we all know that YouTube is great. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing platform. You know, you can learn a lot of skills. But when it comes to playing the saxophone, and especially when it comes to putting down the foundations on playing the saxophone, you know, as a beginner, as an intermediate player, you need someone there to watch you and to tell you what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. Because sometimes you you know might be doing things right, but you maybe don't have um, that amount of knowledge to, to see it. So if you don't have a teacher, guys, I strongly recommend you get one. At least you have someone there to watch you and to tell you, oh, look, this is right, this is wrong, okay? Now, if you wanna work more closely with me and my team here at the London Saxophone School, we'll be super happy to have you and to help you out. Now we do in-person lessons here in London, online lessons on Zoom. So we're also developing an online program. So we have basically have you covered. It's very simple. You can just book your free discovery call. I'll put the link here below in the description and we'll talk about more about what you need to do to improve your playing and how we can help you achieve that. Now, the last thing to avoid is to expect immediate results. And this applies to everyone, regardless of where you are in your journey. If you practice a new concept, a new piece today and you expect to be um, a master on it after an hour you know it's probably going to be really unlikely because the brain needs time to process it you know process all the different layers that are in in the piece of music okay so my advice is this you want to have your practice sessions almost identical for at least three or four days so you're practicing today what you played yesterday, exactly the same. And then tomorrow you're gonna be practicing exactly the same things that you played today and that you played yesterday, okay? Make sense? So at least you're building up foundations on the piece and you're gonna really feel here and here and here, you know? You're gonna feel that everything's, uh, something's happening, something's building up, okay? So I say three, four days 
almost identical practice sessions, you know, if not seven days, okay? And then you start to tweak it, you know, maybe you do a little bit more of this, maybe a little bit of more of that, oh, that bar needs a little bit more work, and stuff like that, okay? But the idea is that the practice sessions are almost identical, so you actually start to build up confidence, sound, technique, speed, whatever, you know, you need to work on, on, on the piece. So you see the results with a delay in a, set, in a way, okay? So if you practice well, if you let the brain do the work, you know, the mature the information and, and absorb the concepts, and you keep doing that on a consistent basis, on a regular basis, then you will see the results you know, guaranteed, okay? It's like if you plant the seed and everything goes well, then you will eat the, the fruit, okay? It's exactly the same thing. So guys, there you have it, the five mistakes to avoid as a beginner and intermediate player. If you have any other questions, just let me know here below in the comments and I will personally reply to those. Don't forget to subscribe and to like the video. And guys, I will see you next week. Bye-bye.